see anything. Hi, my name is Q and I make stuff. Welcome to my workroom. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, refurbishing this Singer 503 Slantomatic Special, also known as a Rocketeer. I had been kind of scoping the internet looking for a vintage machine in my area, kind of figuring that I might score goodly. And I did. This is like the 1961 Rocketeer. It's such a... Mm. It's such a beautiful machine and it comes in this really beautiful blonde wood mid-century modern cabinet with drawers it has drawers it's like a skirt with pockets i'm telling you it's good and it was listed for forty dollars forty dollars forty dollars forty dollars and there was no way I could possibly pass that up. So I scooped it. I didn't even care what was wrong with it. <laughs> so I got it home. I opened it up and I had a look. And it was full of acorns. <laughs> and other seeds that squirrels had been hiding away inside the case of the machine. So I just cleaned it out and oiled it up. I always start with oil. I always start with oil. And oily machine regularly and I from there I kind of worked on trying to figure out what was wrong with the machine so in this video we're gonna follow along as I troubleshoot <sighs> did I get this machine working watch to the end and find out So I got it all oiled up and I found the thing that's wrong with it. The spring that holds the um, bobbin winder tension so that you can wind a bobbin is broken or sprung or whatever. So that's not working. I'm going to see what I can do to find that particular part and because um, maybe I was doing it wrong. But anyway, I, I opened it all up flipped it over, you know, and oiled it with the Singer Silver Machine oil, blew out the fluff, and listened to this baby sing. So good. Oh, oh, it's so pretty. Revised, they don't think it's the spring. Like this little, there's a little tiny spring right here. Um... I mean, granted, it doesn't have any tension, so I'm not really sure how it goes in there. There's another spring um, right here that is just like drooping. Like, so, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's, it's right there. But I think the real problem is actually this disc. Let's see if I can focus on that. Yeah, see how ratchet that looks? So when I, so this is spinning if I can focus, Boop. that thing is spins. And when this spring and etc. is engaged, um, that's supposed to spin, but obviously it's worn out. So um, that needs to be replaced. And I think that is the culprit for why this machine was given up on. I fixed this. I ordered parts from eBay. This is the Bob and Winder assembly. Um, common problem is that there are two springs associated and that and then like there's a rubber business in there that I showed in the last video and that rubber gets old and dry and gross uh, but also that these springs break and the springs are these business that like hold the hold that in place and allow like this to move a little bit so anyway check it out <laughs> gotta hold the jar or it's gonna fly yes I fixed it Boom. Works perfect. 
quickly. Like that. We're in business. And I've concluded that this machine needs googly eyes because you can't unsee this. So it needs an eye here and an eye here. And then this is like its mouth and it kind of in it in like the nose. Kind of looks like a monkey when you see it that way. And you can't unsee it. You cannot unsee monkey face. Okay, so I got the Bob and Emily thing working. This is a different problem. So um, can you see that occasionally there's a, a longer stitch? Um, right there, right there, right there, a stretch right there. For the most part, it's really consistent. Um, but you can see at almost regular intervals, there's this drop where the, the bobbin hook isn't catching. And I'm wondering um, how, what the problem is so that I can diagnose it. Like here's a long stitch, here's a long stitch, here's a long stitch, here's a long stitch. And you can see it's pretty consistent down this whole piece of tape here. And this is a, you know, double fold straight grain tape. Um, the machine's got a new needle in it that is, and the, and the needle is appropriate for this weight of fabric. But so I'm still troubleshooting this machine and trying to figure out how to really make it work. Cause you can see like the stitches are like they're consistent and then like bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> they kind of miss some, it's kind of consistent. I've replaced the upper tensioner assembly and a few other things of just fiddling. I've spent quite a bit of time doing some you know, basic internet research, checking with sewing machine repair guys to try and understand what exactly is going on and what's wrong. So now I'm going to begin. We're just the first time testing something. So what I've done now, one of the things that I've learned is that this machine is really picky about the weight of the thread that it uses. So I've changed my thread to a universal basic Coates and Clark. This is what you use when you sew a project. So maybe what was wrong with this situation was that I was using an incorrect weight of thread. Do you see that right there? The tension underneath is off. So I don't know if you know this, but bobbin assemblies have a little tiny tension screw right there and it was acting as if the bobbin tension was wrong and I wasn't quite sure how to go about troubleshooting it so I I, guess I read my instruction manual and saw looked at the diagram for what it should look like assessed the images to see you know how wrong it was and then I was like, oh, it seems like maybe the bobbin tension needs to be tighter. So um, I tried to turn the screws and that didn't work out so good because it's such a tiny little screwdriver and it was really hard. So what I just did is um, I released, there's a, a, a plate release here. It drops in one way, it drops the feed dogs so that you can do darning and another way it lifts uh, the, these things that hold the plate in place and Hey, hey, gimme, gimme, there we go. And so I tried tightening up that little screw and it was, it seemed like it couldn't go any further. It lifts up, if I can do it with one hand. See that? Oh yeah, baby. And then it slides back, if I can do it. I can't do it one-handed. And oh, there we go, so it slides back and then you can pull this out in theory. There we go. And so what I did was I was able to then get a screwdriver in there and turn the screw. So I loosened, 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 and then kind of found, I tested it and it was too loose, obviously. And so then that gave me a starting point to work from. So then I tightened this screw back up. And so this thing, the way this goes in there, see that groove? 
and it sits right in there. So you fit that baby in there, slide it over, all the way over to the left, and then you move that guy and snaps into place. There's a screw. So that, drop my plates back down, drop my bobbin back in. All right, attempt number 65. <laughs> See what we got. I think I might have. I think we're there. Again, I don't want to be overconfident. That bottom tension might still be a little too tight, but that seems passable. So I am going to try it. I'm going to, for this moment, in time, I'm gonna call this a win. So I wanna see how it functions on an actual product. A couple, get my reverse going. I gotta tell you, after using a machine with automatic features like auto back tack and stuff, um, and automatic needle positioning, This is a bit of a, a chore to remember how to sew on a regular domestic machine. My pin got stuck. I need to back it up a little bit. Mm, interesting. It, where that happened, I have a giant hole. So is this machine gonna be something I can use? Is my problem solving <laughs> solved? I'm gonna go with no, but I'm gonna, Go back over that. Oop. And away we go. Something I can use loaded up with white and call this the machine that I use for my white stuff. I think so. I think there's just some idiosyncrasies that I need to be aware of. Pins, pins catching and stuff. But I, I mean, this, that's where that happened. I think it'll pass. Does it pass with a glowing score? No. <laughs> no, it does not. Uh, but is it is it going to be functional for me? I think so. For some reason, it's not nearly as satisfying as fixing the Kenmore. Maybe because I don't have confidence that it's 100% just yet. So what do you think? Did I get that figured out? Does it seem like it's going to be functional? Do you see anything that I could be doing differently that would make the machine mm, the chef's kiss like perfect? Because I see that it could be dialed in a little bit more and I'm not really sure how to go about dialing it in that much more, how to make it that much more perfect. It still has a few little problems and I'm not a sewing machine repair person. I have just had a lot of sewing machines that I picked up for 25 bucks here or somebody's grandma gave it to me. And so I, I've just had a, a fleet, let's say, of sewing machines that were barely operational when I got them or not operational at all when I fixed it. That's the extent of my knowledge. Being boldly curious and willing Oh, willing to like go in with a screwdriver and figure it out. <laughs> so if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe. I will probably be leaning towards making videos about making stuff rather than fixing the sewing machines. It just so happens that the last couple of machine videos have been about me fixing things um, because I need to get these machines into my workroom so that we can make stuff. Am I going to show you how to make stuff? Do you want to learn how to make stuff? Let me know in the doobly-doo. I am absolutely sitting here in my pajamas. <laughs>